Hello there. So first things first, while I do know how to interview, I'm not super sure I know how to teach people how to interview. So uh, we'll both learn along the way and I'll strive to make these videos more concise and better structured as I go. For now, I'm structuring it like this. One, we'll write a brute force solution uh, to the problem. This is helpful to start understanding um, edge cases and get a better grasp of the problem as a whole. Um, which will allow us to then write an optimized solution to the problem. So this is part number two. And lastly, we'll finish with part number three, which is just little fixes to our optimized solution. Today, we'll tackle the two sum problem. It goes like this. Given an array of integers, return indices of two numbers such that they add up to a specific target. You may assume that each input would have exactly one solution and you may not use the same element twice. So for example, given numbers uh, 2, 7, 11, and 15, and our target being 9, we want to find number zero, uh, numbers in index 0 and 1 to get 2 and 7 because they get up to 9, and we return this vector of indices. Okay, so uh, the one restriction we have is that they cannot be the same element. So say um, our target was say b6 and the first element is 3 we cannot use index 0 and 0 okay now while reading this it's important that you start thinking how to solve it to me the most apparent solution is creating two nested for loops and that is the okay so lead code as you can see already gives us sort of the starting point but it doesn't do much for us so let's get to coding the actual solution uh, I'll speed up the footage and then go over it. All right, so in here, we're starting off a for loop. Uh, we're using enumerate so we can get the index and the value and we're iterating through the nums vector okay so again two nested for loops so we can get an index and then iterate to the entire array trying to find the index or the number that complements the sum to, re to achieve the target so and then in here uh, we'll just check uh, if well of course if the indexes are the same then that's no good and we want to check if the sum of the two values achieve our target. If it does, then we just return a vector of four indices. Um, else, if nothing was matched, I'm just returning an empty vector. Now, the solution works, but it's not the best, as it has a time complexity of O1 squared. Um, that is, the first for loop iterates n times, and the other one iterates n times inside of the first one. So, um, hence, we multiply the complexities and get an overall of n squared, which, again, isn't very good. Now, to better our problem, we have to decrease our time complexity. So, an option is to try to remove um, the nesting of for loops and use a data structure that allows for um, quicker lookup times. Now, if you don't know the answer to this right off the bat, um, don't worry, back when I was starting, I didn't know as well. Uh, it takes a little practice, but uh, little by little, you get there. Anyway, let's look at the Rust docs for collections. Um, as you can see, VEC allows for a get of a 1, but we're getting at a specific index, um, which doesn't really help because that's the whole point of the problem, right? Finding the index. And the other option that has an O1 of, that has a get of a 1, is hash maps. So with this in mind, I would like to propose a second solution. Now, what if instead of looping through nums every time we reach a new index, we just try to get the value that we're looking for from a hash map? So something like this. Okay, so in here, um, as you can see, we're looping once, 
uh, we get this value, which I called look, which is just the target minus um, the value that we're currently at. And then we try to get from HM, which is a hash map that I haven't defined yet. Uh, we try to look for this well, look value. And um, this is just so that we can compare them. If I is different than position, we return the vector. Okay, so we're only looping once and we're using the hash map to get. Now, of course, our hash map doesn't have all these values. So unfortunately, something that we have to do is this. In here, we first add every element to the hash map, and then we look for the specific value in that fashion that I showed you just earlier. And while we still have two for loops, that's not too big of a problem because they're not nested. That is, instead of multiplying the complexities, we have to add a complexity of n, we find the complexity of n, to get a 2n, um, or an, having an overall o n squared, because 2 is relevant at large n's. And that is it for our optimized solution. Now let's move on to Now, of course, the solution won't really work unless we actually import uh, or use hash maps. So select std collections hash map. And now, if you really don't like having two for loops, that's okay because we can still optimize it um, a bit further by making use of the fact that an element cannot be matched with itself. So what we can do Now this one is a bit trickier to understand, so let's trace the code together. Um, say that we want to get 9 from the first example that we had. So a vector of 2, 7, 11, and 15. So in the first iteration, we'll have something like this. We'll have a look value of 7, because we'll be subtracting 9 from our val, which is 2, and we'll have an empty um, hash map. Note that we're no longer uh, adding all the values to the hash map. So we'll try to get um, the value seven. Of course, nothing will be matched. So we'll move on. We'll insert um, a key of two and a value of zero in the hash map. Now moving on to the next iteration, we'll be looking for two with a value of seven and our hash map will have a key of one and a value, sorry, a key of two and a value of one. So when we try to do hm.get, we will actually match a value. So matched. Uh, and finishing off, we will return 1 and 0. OK, so now it might be, I guess, a bit odd to wrap your head around this swing curve that you make up different examples and try tracing them yourself. Now to finish off, I just wanted to ask that you let me know what I did well, what I could do better um, in the comments below. Um, and anyway, this will be it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.